Fred, good morning. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you for having me, man. How you doing, brother? Doing good, man. It's great to have you on. Um, all right, so, so give me some experiences of your LSU-Mississippi State games. This is always, uh, always a pretty good game every year. And, and when you were playing, this was, I, I believe it went to overtime uh, in Tiger Stadium in a classic. Um, what do you remember about some of your matchups with LSU? Oh, man, uh, I remember a lot, man. Y'all, the one thing about LSU, man, I enjoyed playing in Baton Rouge. I had an older cousin, Cedric Donaldson, play cornerback in Baton I mean, it, it, for the Tigers. Yeah, so I was used to the Yeah, so I was used to the stadium. I used to come there all the time. So when I finally got a chance to play in it, of course, he came back and came to the game. He's talking trash to me uh, out of the stand. And I'm like, all right. I said, I bet you I get my hand on the ball tonight. And, of course, I got my hands on the ball that night. And literally ran from side to side. I got. I literally ran forty yards side to side. Literally got two yards. So wait, Fred. <laughs> so Fred, your cousin. Your cousin's one of the. He's a great day. Not a great. He's got one of the greatest moments at LSU with the the yes, pick against, six against Florida. Against Florida. How do you get out of Baton Rouge? How do you get away from LSU? Well, I used to always come down and you know hang out with the fellas. I knew. Uh, I knew Steve. I knew Rondell Mealy, and me and Rondell Mealy talk trash to each other so much. So I told Rundell, I ain't never coming to LSU. I said, I can't wait. I can't wait to play against you. So at once I started hanging out with the fellas and me and Robert Roy got real close, I said, you know what? I want to play against these fellas, not with them. Uh, take me back to your recruiting with Jackie Sherrill. Why, why Mississippi State? Well, one thing about it is, if you if you know Jackie Sherrill, you don't let Jackie Sherrill around your parents if you ain't trying to go to his school. <laughs> he's a charm. He's a snake charmer, and he literally sat down in my mom's living room and cracked open the Bud Light. And I, I left out the room and came back five minutes later. My mom said I was going to Mississippi State. <laughs> 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 it's what it always says about recruits' moms. You got to, you got to get to the moms. That's, that's how you no, do it. No, you got to, you got to get to the mom. They got the last say in it. Like you remember Landon Collins' mom thought he was going <laughs> to <Yeah. be laughs> <Michigan. laughs> <We laughs> He ended up in Alabama. We do. So you watch college football? Do you watch a lot? Oh, of- I watch college football every Saturday, baby. I'm, I'm religiously a college football fan. That'll never change. So what do you think about this freshman LSU has Derek Stingley Jr. playing at cornerback? He's got three straight games with three interceptions. Everybody think he's God's gift to cornerbacks. You know, me and, me and Cedric had this argument about DBU all the time because don't forget the big play Slay and the rest of these guys are from Mississippi State. They in the league right now, all right, <laughs> making big plays. Abrams. Right? Yeah, I, I, we got guys in there. And if you really want to talk, you know, LSU, they put out more players than us, but we all about quality, not quantity. <laughs> because I don't know if y'all got a defense lineman that's better than Fletcher Cox. I know y'all ain't got a quarterback that's better than Dak Prescott. We got one on the way. We got one on the way, Freddie. We got one on the way. Listen, he's special on campus right now. Yeah. I, you know, usually usually LSU is where five-star quarterbacks go to die. Right? <laughs> usually usually, usually a, a five-star hit LSU campus and leave a two-star. That's right. <laughs> Well, next time you hear about him, he's selling insurance is what happens. He's a five-star when he shows up. Next thing you know, he's asking you about your life plan. Uh, now, now, that's, what, that's what happened. But Joe Burrow is a real quarterback. Yeah. And just seeing his personality and, and he's a pretty boy quarterback. Like I always tell people, unless you're a pick first, still a quarterback, you can't be ugly. And, and one thing about Joe Burrow, he's a handsome guy. So that tells me he's going to have a bright future. Freddie, uh, what's going on with the Redskins, man? Do y'all like Geis up there? We, we were so ready for him to get on the field. I was going to say, we're still waiting to see, can he play pro football? You know, he been it, 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 it was hurt his own rookie year. He, he came in this year and he got injured again. So with Geis, we just want Geis to get healthy, man. If, yeah. if the kid can get healthy, he's proven he can run the ball outside, inside. Uh, he needs to work on his pass blocking a little bit, but... Now that we have a young quarterback in Haskins and a young group of wide receivers, I think it's a perfect room for him to grow up in because basically he's, he's going to be a rookie with the rest of the guys. Is it as bad as it seems with Washington? It's not. Think about this. Hmm. Uh, a year and a half, like a year and a half ago, before Alex Smith got hurt, we were six and three in leading the NFC East that had two playoff teams in it with the Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, this team. Went to L.A. and beat the Rams to death a year a year and a half ago. This team is not far away. You look at John Allen, uh, uh, Ron Payne, and the rest of those guys on that front, the defensive front, the offensive front, when Trent is a part of the team, him and Shea 
there. They're, they're, they're very good parents. Uh, and then you look at Terry McLaurin, the young wide receiver we draft. We have a lot of talent. We just missed an Urban Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pitch, Freddie. Okay, so that, that that's what I was going to ask. What is if, if 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 you have all these positives in Washington right now? What is holding them back ultimately? Well, it's, think about this: it's thirty-two teams in the league. Yeah, every every team got talent. The talent the talent level on each team is not that far apart. Huh? The only thing that separates us in the NFL is your coach. Who is your chess master? Who is who's moving the chess pieces? And right now, can no coach out coach Belichick? He's the ultimate checkmate. They can't stop it. Who do, who do you think the best corner in the league is right now? Ooh, that's hard to say. It's always I always say it's never really a best. It's who playing the best right now. Okay. And I think Richard Sherman coming out there to kill league. Richard Sheets seems to be back. You know, I, I actually love Pat Peterson. I don't hold uh-huh. the fact that he went to LSU against him. <laughs> Uh, like I say, uh, Darius Slay is playing some lockdown corner. I love Minka Fitzpatrick. He went to mm. Pittsburgh. He's going to do well over there. Uh, there's so many corners right now. Well, what, what do you think about Lattimore down here in uh, New Orleans? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Top five corner in the league. And he just continues to get better. I thought he couldn't get any better. <laughs> he continues to get better. And guess what? He, he, he got that Superdome in, in the background behind him, too. So, you know, playing with a I, – I, playing with a crazy environment in Mississippi State. It was hard to play there. We had the cowbells. It was a very loud environment. That really helps us defensive back. And Latimer, yes, he's most definitely a top five cornerback in this league. Ryan Clark's down here in media. He's, he's living in Baton Rouge and goes back up to ESPN in, in between his hits. And he tells stories about Sean Taylor uh, when he played alongside him in Washington. You played alongside Sean, didn't you? Yep, I was there when we drafted him. Give me some and stories we, about how good he was. Yeah, so Clark said he's the best football player he's ever seen. Is that is that true for you? Yeah, that's it. He's the best football football player I ever seen, and I made it to a team that had uh, five or six Hall of Famers on it. My first Damn. meeting in my meet in my first meeting in my meeting room was uh Deion Sanders, Dale Green, Champ Bailey, <laughs> Mark Carrier, Sam Shade. That was my that was my first meet. So I'm like, why y'all waste this pick on me? <laughs> <laughs> so. And when I see, and I got a chance to practice with these guys and, and watch what made each of them special. And when I see Sean, it just the intensity, the size, the speed. It, he literally, he literally played like a guy that's five ten, but he ever bit a six three, two hundred and forty pounds. Mm. Uh, and he could literally run with the best. I remember watching him stand up beside Levar Arrington in the huddle, and it wasn't nothing different about their size. Wow. Right, he was literally, legitly the same size as him. And when I say can get sideline to sideline fast as any guy I ever seen, and when he comes to the pile, he's going to explode. We used to call him a grenade because he used to hurt our guys too. He lacerated my kidney and left me in Dallas because <laughs> I was in the pile. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Fred Smoot here on Off the Bench. Uh, left me in Dallas. Left me in Dallas is the best part of that. Fred. They, they, they left me in Dallas. I couldn't even fly because I had a left great kid. They, 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 left, they left me down there in Dallas. Fred, if, I, uh, if an NFL GM came to you today and said, yeah. Fred, we want you back on the squad, how much time mm-hmm. do you need and could you play a whole game or how many series? What do you think? back this year, I need Lisa money. I wouldn't be back to playoff time. <laughs> I, I would be I would be back to like to at least uh, I say around the holidays, November something and if, if, one thing about the NFL, it's a very demanding league. And if you're not in shape and you're not ready for it and you're doing a lot of thinking out there, you're gonna get beat. If you're not in shape, they're gonna throw it at you because you're tired. And if your body can't hold up, it's bound to break on you and quit mm-hmm. on you. So you know, I, I would say it would literally take months. I had to use, lose this gut by my butt right now. I had to literally get mentally in shape. It, it'll be a lot I have to do to get out of here. <laughs> How original would this interview be if we asked you about the love boat? Does, does everybody oh, ask wow. you about that? It's a good way of framing it. <laughs> I, think it's all, I think it's all men dream to know what really happened. Yes. On that boat. So, right. so mostly, so most definitely, everybody always sneak one in because you tell me what really happened. I was like, yeah, if they gave me a show on HBO, I could really paint the picture for you. <laughs> Fred, uh, we could do this all day, man. I appreciate the time. Thank who wins? You. Who wins this Saturday, LSU-Mississippi State? Well, you know, I am a homer, but I'm also a realist. 
we're talking about the best offense LSU has ever had. The defense has not been playing like they usually do. But I'm sorry, this LSU team is basically unstoppable. And I told people last year what I wanted for Halloween was I wanted to hear Ed or Jerome cry. That has to be the most terrifying thing of all time. I want to use it at my door for Halloween, and nobody has yet to send me footage of Ed or Jerome crying. I want to hear how it sounds. It has to be ridiculously bad. <laughs> I Fred love you, Fred. on Twitter at fsmoot21 Sean T. This was incredible. We will call you again soon, sir. Thank you. Hey, anytime, fellas. Anytime. We're done. We make good combo in Mississippi too. Now don't forget. <laughs>